this morning, as soon as Nick gets down here, he's going to end up sharing his testimony. What, about a month ago, five weeks ago or so, we ended up having uh, the overcomers came up here, shared their testimonies that had, uh, you know, moms and dads that were in prison and there were drug dealers and and all the, all of that and the things that they had overcome. You know, it's really it's really awesome. It's really interesting to end up hearing a testimony like if Christy Lynn were to uh, wow, just like magic. If Christy Lynn were to come up here and share her testimony, there are a different set of circumstances, a different set of obstacles, challenges that preachers' kids go through. And this is one of them, one of those guys, a PK, that has told me that he would like to share his testimony this morning. So let's give a big valley welcome to Nick Hansen. This thing works. You guys keep it fairly close to your. Keep, <laughs> but you don't have time for that. I'll take my. Probably should use your own notes. Mine definitely won't make sense to you. Hi. Bear with me a second. Uh, kind of scrambling a little bit here forgot about five things on my way trying to come down to go back up, so give me a sec. If we could, could we pray? That would be uh, calm my heart a little bit right now, so if you could join me, that would be great. Dear Lord, thank you uh, to bringing me to this place. Call my mind. Your words speak through me. So, um, once again, my name's Nick Hansen. Uh, my wife, and Molly, and I and our three kids have been coming here for, I guess I should say, about a year now. Um, so, like Pastor was saying, I, I obviously, I, I grew up in a, just to jump into it, I, I grew up in a, in a very loving and Christian home my entire life. I had... <laughs> Amazing parents who loved God, who prayed, who uh, that was that was enveloped in our house. Uh, it, it took over our house all the time. Um, and my parents are uh, a big reason why I'm I'm at this point I am right now um, because of their prayers. Um, so uh, obviously, growing up uh, as a little kid, I struggled um, with anxiety. A lot. Um, went through some kind of crazy things. Did some when I was a little kid. I used to I used to pluck my hair and do things like that just to try to cope with being so nervous. Um, and just obviously, as time has gone on, um, we're trying to deal with that anxiety and deal with that fear. Um, obviously, turned to some other uh, substances. Um, I had. Uh, an addiction to painkillers for 10, 11 years. Um, um, I'm 104 days sober now. So, <laughs> um, and that, that life I led, um, I mean, there was times where I felt I was, 
you know, in line with God, trying to follow God, but I, I just never could fully commit to what he had for me. And it was the fear and just not being able to just say yes and, and get all the way. I'd always just step back and start going another direction. And the great thing about God is he just, he never leaves. He just continues to trail you, sit next to you. You might scoot over a space and he'll scoot right over. I can't, the, the picture I have in my mind going through this process is I just felt like I was walking with my head down. I was just too scared to look up, too scared to look left or right, too scared to do anything. And, and like I said, 104 days ago, I, I came to that head. I was at home. It was a Sunday afternoon and all day I, I, we came to church actually and I, uh, I just couldn't. I had this overwhelming, obviously, feel of, of shame and guilt. It just, if, if people, if any of you have experienced that, uh, my experience has lasted for so, so many years, and God is the only one who's been able to just relieve that, take that away. Uh, but anyway, we were sitting at home, and I don't know what we were doing. I honestly can't remember any of it because I, my mind was on going insane and sitting there pacing the house. My wife was, what's the matter, Nick? What's the matter? I'm like, nothing, 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 nothing. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I, I, I've had enough. I've been up to here with, with everything. I couldn't, I couldn't handle anymore. I was at a breaking point. I'm, I'm, my, everything was just coming crashing down. I, I couldn't function. I couldn't think. I couldn't do anything. Couldn't eat. Um, so I told her, I was like, I just need to go on a drive. I, I'm, I'm going to go to my parents. She said, you need to go talk to somebody. Go, you know, I'm going to go to my parents' house. Um, so I went to my, my parents' house, and they weren't home. Um, and I had, I had all this kind of envisioned and planned out of, honestly, for years of how it's like God had put this, this uh, in my future, and, and I didn't realize it back when I first started doing um, the drugs and all that type of stuff of, um, of just coming to a point with my family and being able to release all of the lies that I've had, all of the, the fear and the shame. So we, uh, I got to my parents' house. They weren't there. They were at my aunt and uncle's uh, for a birthday party. And so I sat there on the couch. I'm just sobbing. I'm crying. I'm crying. I'm crying. I'm crying. I call, and so I call my brother, and he was the first person that I was able to just tell them what was going on. And instantly, instantly a little piece just fell off. And finally, my parents, a couple hours later, my brother came over and I just told him everything. I just, I laid it on the table and said, I need God. I need, I need his healing. I need it all. Um, and then later that evening, we, we drove over and, uh, which is probably the hardest thing I, I had to do is I, I obviously confront and tell my, my, my wife, my beautiful wife, my, I have a great wife. Let's just put it that way. She is the most <laughs> caring, compassionate, loving woman that I, I don't necessarily deserve, but God has put her in my heart or my life. Um, so I'm going to take care of that forever. So... <laughs> So I tell her, and, and I get, I sit down in bed. She's there, and it's, I don't know, midnight or something like that by the time I get home. And I just tell her, and the look on her face, she just kind of looks at me and goes, goes, what, 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 what? For 10 years? What, what? And I'm like, yeah. And so anyway, we, we go through our process and, and, and just trying to have a full understanding for her. And, um, and then... Uh, what was really, really great um, is, is last night I had an opportunity uh, to tell my, my in-laws, which are here today, um, which I've had a lot of. Um, you know, I, I have their daughter, and, and she's... <laughs> I just, 
I'm glad they now know and they understand that um, I'm going to take care of her. And, and I think they know that now for sure. Um, but the biggest thing that held me back for so many years, years and years of just trying to, um, just going through this and, and being too scared and, and feeling so much shame as the enemy, that is their, their ultimate goal is to never let you get out of that feeling. That feeling is nothing. That, that, those things are nothing. You just have to let them go. Let them go. God is there to give forgiveness. He's there to give grace. He's there to, <laughs> he's there to give perfect peace is the best way I can explain it. I can't, I can't explain anything more than uh, after all this had happened and we, I was at Pastor uh, Lynn and Renee's house and talking with them and, and they, they prayed over me and uh, obviously I'm, I'm praying and I just fall to the floor and that was the I wouldn't say first time but it had been a long time since I've felt the Holy Spirit cover my entire body and my mind and my soul and eliminate the urge the anything that would have made me go the other way in the other direction again. And he has truly, truly produced a miracle in my life and my family, my parents, my mom, they've been praying and praying for years and years and years for me to come back. So, I think the biggest thing that I can say is um, don't fear God's love. I, I was scared of it for some reason because I just didn't think that he could love me enough. Or I did something too wrong that he just would look at me different or think different or I just wasn't, wasn't good enough for that. But that's just the enemy and that's just fear. That's, that's nothing more. He's there to... <laughs> That's all he wants. He, he, he wants to give us his love. So I guess uh, I, I don't, I can keep going. I, I had a verse that I wrote down we, when we were studying and talking before I got baptized. I, and last night I was reading um, through Romans 5 and 6. I, can, I read them over and over and over and over again. And this, this verse, it's, uh, it's Romans 5, 3 through 5. Um, and this is the New Living Translation. It says this. We can rejoice too when we run into a problem, when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance, and endurance develops strength of character. Character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. This hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. So my wife and kids and I, we went to the Oregon coast um, last weekend, I think. I, I think it was last weekend, so, or last week. And we were, went on a big, long hike, and we've never gone on a long hike with our three children before. And it went great, actually. So I was really pumped. Um, but anyway, we got to this area. There's a waterfall, and there's a stream, and we're sitting there on this rock, throwing rocks. My kids are out playing, and I'm just sitting there thinking. And, and this kind of came to my mind. I was like, God's love is like a beautiful mountain stream. It's always calming and always flowing, and we just need to soak in that love and peace forever. So... Um, I don't have much more than that. I, I appreciate getting the opportunity to, to speak and, and share my testimony. So, yeah, that's, that's it. Don't just stay standing for a couple seconds. In fact, we can maybe, 
Molly, you're right there. Yes. Renee, Ruth. Renee, Ruth. Yeah, isn't this an amazing couple? This is going to be a power couple. See, that's the enemy's goal is to isolate you, to get you off by yourself, thinking I'm the only one. God's ashamed of me. He will never accept me. I've done too much, too wrong. And I come from a preacher's household, so it has to be even way, way, way worse for me. It's like, no, no, no. He is a forgiving God. He's a God of progress. All we have to do, we can trip and fall flat on our face as long as we get up and take off running again. And I I just think of, uh, it's amazing that, for one thing, it's amazing that Nick was able to hide that for over 10 years. Like, where were you? No. (laughs) No. (laughs) No. No. It's because she's so loving, caring, and trusting and pure in heart that she had no idea. She had no idea. So I'd like all of us just to extend our hands towards these guys because I know God's got some amazing, incredible, very special, special purpose and work for them to do. Just thank you for again for overcomers, for overcomers. And I'm going to ask you to pray. Nick, when we were sitting down there, there's something so special on your life and molly there's no words to tell you the purest heart you have the purest heart and diane's behind me she said he even looks like jesus (laughs) (laughs) so i just thank you god for this amazing couple or jesus your your kids that you love so much jesus we thank you lord for the beautiful family that's here supporting them and loving them and our church family and we just thank you lord that you've broken every chain every chain all the fear all the anxiety it can never return again we bind it and it can never return again nick you are such a threat to the kingdom of darkness and i believe that's why uh, you were tormented for all those years because of what is going to happen in your life you and molly are going to set the captives free you're going to lay hands on people and they're going to be delivered of demon spirits uh drug addiction is going to be falling off of people people are going to be, be able to come and to you guys because of your vulnerability and your the way that you re- just told this story it makes me want to confess anything that i i have in my life to you because you have been so pure and honest and i thank you god that this marriage is going to flourish like never before we bless their marriage oh god this couple will be the example of what christ meant when he said that these two shall become one and lord we put blessings financial blessings physical blessings lord All their children are going to be raised up in the most amazing home where they are going to feel the peace of Jesus settling in on their house. And I thank you that Molly, Lord, the anointing of the Lord would be upon her when she teaches, when she goes about her day. Lord, I just thank you for the strength that she's going to start feeling. Lord, the boldness that is going to come out of her, and we bless her. In Jesus' name, for being such a faithful wife. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. An incredible mother, an incredible daughter, incredible daughter-in-law. And we just bless her in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. We thank you. We give you all the glory, Jesus. All the glory to you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that Nick is going to have a boldness. Nick, I even feel that you're going to be speaking with a mic in front of your mouth a lot of times. There's a mantle that's being passed down to you in the name of Jesus, even overseas. I can see you going overseas and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we bless your family. We bless you in Jesus' name. Jesus. Love you. And you.
Oh, God is good all the time. All the time. Man, was that powerful or what? Vulnerability, transparency. God loves that. God loves that. Let's just pray again. It's like decision time right here. I have a, a one hour message or I have a 15 minute message. Do I stretch out a 15 minute or do I condense an hour? Oh. All right, you got the short one. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We say, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Just say that with me. Holy Spirit, come. Just have your way in our midst this morning. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for the testimony. And we're just believing. And we're receiving what you have for us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. I think <clears throat> the first scripture I want to read is Colossians 2.9. And Linda, this is going to be probably the first time that I have done this to you. I'm going to be NIV this morning. It's like, what? Yeah, this is a first. But I don't even have to have glasses. See the print in this thing? And I like the translation for two scriptures. The NIV for two scriptures that I'm going to use here pretty quick. But... Colossians, second chapter, ninth verse. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And in Christ you've been brought to fullness. He's the head over every power and authority. For in Christ, New King James, which I have right there, says, is the Godhead in bodily form. For in Christ is the fullness of the Godhead in bodily form. For in Christ, in NIV, for in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. In Christ Jesus. I want to... I think do a kind of a, a, a fast trip beginning with the, with, with the birth of Jesus. The story of, uh, in Matthew, first chapter of Matthew, after we go through the, the lineage when an angel has visited Mary first and said, Mary, you're going to have the Son of God. And Mary's response was, as you've said, let it be unto me. As you said, let it be unto me. I'm ready to have the Son of God, to give birth to the Son of God, to be responsible for the Son of God. Son of God living in me. Jesus in me. That sounds good, doesn't it? Jesus in me. Okay. Now, when we, when we think about it, I'm going to have to try to hurry this just a little bit, but when we think about the natural, uh, the natural aspect of that, Women have to go through this, this cycle thing, and eggs are produced, and an egg needs to be fertilized, right? We all understand the biology of that. The egg needs to be fertilized. Well, that, in Jesus' case, was a supernatural event, right? 
But okay, there was a birth that was done, a natural experience, painful and all of that, but a conception that was supernatural. Because the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, God spoke the word. She said, let it be unto me. And said, it was done. The spoken word. And then it says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So Jesus, Mary was the physical aspect. She was the, 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 the man, the daughter of man, son of man, daughter of man. So Jesus was a product of man and a product of God. Fully man, fully God, right? Okay, but there was a physical experience that had to take place. He had to be given birth. He, he had flesh, he had blood, he had all of that. But the deity of God, the fullness of God, dwelt in him. We're all there, all agreed? That was Jesus. And it also said, in that, in, in that first chapter, it said, he went and talked to the Father. Went and talked to the angel, went and talked to, to Joseph and said, what's going to happen? And you need to take her as your wife, and this is what's going to happen. And his name will be called... And his name will be called... So four of us know the name. Come on. And his name will be called Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. He, <laughs> the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and his name will be called Jesus. Before that, it was prophesied that he will be Emmanuel, God with us. But his name is Jesus. Jesus is God with us in bodily form. We good? All clear? Okay. And his name definitely is? Jesus. 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 The name above all names. Jesus. Jesus. Now, I'm going to go through, uh, just, I'm just going to talk about some of these scriptures instead of go through all of them so I can make this this hour message, uh, 24 more minutes. Jesus 14.9, John 14.9 says, If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you know me, you know the Father. So Jesus, again, was the fullness. He was the Father was in him. He was in the Father. He only did what the Father, the Spirit of God, living in him, dwelling within him, showed him, taught him, led him to do. He did nothing on his own, right? We all completely agree on that? Okay. So God the Father living, the Spirit of God the Father living in the Son. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I am Jesus, born of Mary, born of woman. Name, Jesus, Jesus. I just keep saying this. This is something that, that I believe is really, really important. Um, Fourteen, when we get down to like 1426. You know what? I think I'm just going to read some of 14. I'm not going to just skip around that much. 14... Okay, 14.15, the 14th chapter of John, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commands. This is red letters, Jesus speaking in NIV form. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. That is the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him, because it, accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you, will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you before long. The world will not see me anymore, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. 
on that day, you will realize that I'm in my Father, you're in me, I'm in you. And whoever keeps my commands and whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself or manifest myself to them. I'm going to jump down to 26. All this I've spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace, my peace, I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled and don't be afraid. I think when, when, when Nick was talking about that, that peace, that peace, that, in, that incredible peace that he couldn't understand, that he couldn't explain. If I would have thought of it, I, I had <laughs> Renee, when Nick and I were, we have this big fuzzy white carpet rug thing that's in front of our couch, and that's where we we're uh, praying with Nick, and that's where the power of God came over him, and he probably was laying on that carpet for, with the most peaceful, peaceful look on his face. The power of God came on him, came over him, and he was describing that. And in that, in that presence of God, he had the most peaceful, peaceful look on his face. It was just incredible to, to be, to watch, to be in the, in the same room and in that atmosphere. And, and uh, since he's as big as me, or maybe even a little bit taller than me, when the power of God hit him, I kind of tried to hold him up a little bit, but there was no holding him up, so we both ended up on the carpet. <laughs> so where Renee ended up getting the, getting the picture was with me kind of scooting over and trying to work my way to get back up while he was just lying there in complete peace, that peace of God that surpasses all understanding, which completely delivered him from an addiction... To pain pills, which is one of the worst addictions I understand that there is. Is that not right? Yeah. I see the experts over there. They're all shaking their heads. Yes. <laughs> so I, I say... All of this is that, that, that peace that's available to us, that peace is, that's available for us, is through Jesus Christ. He came to destroy the works of the devil. He came that we would have life and have abundant life through him. Not the, something that we have to be looking over our shoulder, not something that we have to hide from, not something that we have to be ashamed of. There is therefore now no shame, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, called according to his purpose for their life. It's going to be amazing to see what, <laughs> to see Nick and Molly walking in, fully into the purpose that God has for them. When the, as the, that Holy Spirit is referred to several times as the Spirit of truth, the Spirit of truth, it says He will lead you into all truth. He will be your guide. He will be your comfort. I would like to give you, everybody, homework to read from chapters 14, 15, 16, and 17. That's only three and a half pages to read in the next week. John... 14, 15, 16, and 17. We're going to get into John 17 here just in a little bit because there's a, a point that is made that I think is so, so powerful and significant that I don't want to forget it. I don't want to skip over it, but there's another promise that, that Jesus has made. He says, um, and it's in 15, verse 11. I'm going, to, I'm going to start with verse 9. I'm sorry, Linda. Verse 9. I'm going to back up just a little bit. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. 
Jesus speaking to each one of us, basically. So as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. I think, again, even listening to Nick's testimony, not sure if Jesus really could love him or not. And if he did, it seemed like it was part-time and stuff. It's like, no, no, no. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commandments... You will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I've told you this so that my joy may be in you, that your joy may be complete. Uh, in, in New King James or in New Living Translation, it says that your joy may be overflowing. Now, the joy of the Lord, when we receive his joy, when we receive his love, becomes our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So when he says, I give you my joy, that my joy, that that your joy will be overflowing. Do you receive the joy of the Lord this morning? Do you walk and operate and function in that joy? And when people get to experience that joy, they just say, I want some more of that. That's the people that I want to be around. They're a joyful people that my joy may be in you, that your joy will be full. Joy of the Lord. When the Holy Spirit comes, He will guide you into all truth. I've been asked before, I have to share a little something right here that... um, probably almost 20 years ago now, I was, I was uh, asked if I might want to serve on the board of, of this church. And I said, yeah, I, I think so. I think I could do that. And then I was asked, how, how were you baptized? I said, what do you mean, how was I baptized? I was baptized in water, uh, immersion. It's like, well, what was spoken over you? It's like, well, I have no idea. What difference does that make? Well, were you baptized in the name of Jesus? I said, I, I, uh, I don't know. And to be honest, I was a little offended by that because I was baptized, so who cares how I was baptized? It's like, I don't get it. I don't know why you're asking me that question, so probably I don't want to serve on your board. It's like, <laughs> so I, I waited for... For a while. And then I started a search on my own, and I felt like the Holy Spirit just gave me a download as to, oh, oh, that's why they would be asking. That's why they would be saying, I get it, I get it, I get it. And it says, Jesus was making these promises. He said that the Holy Spirit is going to be coming. And and you know what? You're going to do even greater things than I've done because I'm going to be with the Father and the Holy Spirit's going to be here with you. He's going to teach you. He's going to lead you. He's going to guide you. And again, lead you into all truth. You believe that? That the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. Well, we're going to turn really quickly to, uh, to Acts 2.38. Or we probably don't even need to, need to turn there. I'll just tell you a little bit more story. When we get into Acts, the second chapter of Acts, it is when the Holy Spirit came upon them, the day of Pentecost, and the Holy Spirit came upon them. Something else that I think is really cool when I was studying this and studying it some more and studying it some more, um, on the day of Pentecost, you know, prior to that time, a lot of times they only counted the men There were like 5,000 that were fed, and that was only men. We don't really know how many women were there. You know what I'm talking about? Women really didn't count much, or they weren't counted even most of the time. But when they're telling the story about the day of Pentecost in the upper room, and they said, like Mary and several other women were among them on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit fell. So it wasn't just for the men. Women were to be empowered by the Holy Ghost as well. (laughs) You will be empowered from on high when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And it said tongues of fire settled on them, came in like a mighty rushing wind, and every one of them received the Holy Spirit, men and women alike. The women were counted. 
Okay. Now, Holy Spirit will come and lead you into all truth. They came down from the upper room filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. Um, and you know the Great Commission, when it says, uh, Matthew 28, 18, the Great Commission it says, Go, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go into all nations, creating disciples of all nations. Everybody say, all nations. The Great Commission is go create disciples of all nations. Of all nations. I'm thinking, how do you make disciples of a, full, of a whole nation? I, this was my interpretation. How, how do nations become disciples? It's like, now wait a minute. It's as if you're building a team of disciples of nations. It's like building a basketball team of women, building a football team of men. Does this make sense? Are you sure? Okay. Making disciples of all nations, meaning that there will be some disciples coming from each and every nation. We're not turning nations into disciples, but some disciples from each and every nation. It's like, oh, thank you, Lord. I needed that clarification. Thought maybe somebody else might too. Anybody find that helpful? Okay. Women are counted. We're making disciples of all nations. He came down... Peter came down, and, and they all they started speaking. They were speaking in tongues, and everyone was hearing them talk in their own language. And I think there was probably 15 or 16 different nations that were down there being represented when they were filled with the Holy Spirit and came down and started speaking. Does this make sense? So they started making disciples of all several nations just by coming down and having the first 3,000 members added to the early church. Make sense? Okay. Now, when Peter began to preach, and they were absolutely cut to the heart, each of them understanding what he was saying in their own language even, and they said, brethren, what must we do? to inherit eternal life and be saved. And he said, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin, and you will receive the promised gift of the Holy Spirit. Be baptized how? In the name of Jesus. Jesus was, we started out in Colossians 2.9, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. If you've seen the Father, you've seen me. So what, when I, this is what I came to believe, it's like, oh, if the Holy Spirit's going to come in Jesus' absence, he's going to lead us into all truth. The establishment of the New Testament church was made in such a way through Peter, who was a Jew, got up there and said, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. That's why I baptize in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin, because I believe that is not, and I am not trying to draw a line that says, if you're not baptized this way, you're not going to have, if you're not baptized this way, you don't have the Holy Spirit. I'm just saying that's how how he showed me to get me over a little bit of my offense. And when I was in my late 50s, I was rebaptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of my sins. I ended up finally filled with the Holy Spirit uh, and speaking in tongues, which was a 13 year journey for me. So, not necessarily a quick learner, huh? You might even say stubborn, might even say a little bit rebellious, but uh, I came around. I understood because Holy Spirit led me on this little journey that I've just shared with you. Does that make sense? That's how I learned it. 
Okay, now, let's turn one more time to, skip, 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 skip. Seventeen, John seventeen. I'm sorry, John seventeen. Go ahead and check your emails or whatever you need to. I'll be I'll be with you just shortly. <laughs> wow. See, Jesus, this, this 17th chapter is something that is, um, spoke very powerfully to me personally in, in how Jesus was praying. It's, it's, I found it first interesting, intriguing, and then powerful. Here we go. After Jesus he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. It's like he's speaking in third person here for a little bit. Father, glorify your Son. Who is his Son? Jesus. This is Jesus is doing the praying, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, he's still speaking, speaking third person, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I've brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. It's like, wow, wow, wow. Now I want to go back to, to, to Jesus when he was born, born of a woman, born in the flesh. So the Spirit of God living in Jesus. When Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit came in the form of a dove and settled on him. So he had the presence of God, <laughs> Spirit of God in him. He had the presence and power of God all over him, and then he started his ministry. That's when he went out into the, into the desert, was tempted of the devil, and came back, and his ministry began. The miracles, signs, wonders uh, began taking place. And I was just I was thinking how that, how that works, the physical aspect of Mary producing... Her son, flesh, blood, nerves, uh, eyes, ears, as we are with God inside. But he had to overcome all the obstacles of the flesh. I feel like that was him speaking in, in, in third person there. It's like, Father, I'm communicating with you right now, spirit to spirit, as we were before Spirit to spirit, as we were before, because in the flesh I have overcome every obstacle that was set before me. I've done everything that you asked me. I've done everything that you showed me. Anything that you wanted, I overcame the flesh, this body that you put me in, supernaturally working with you. Father, we co-labored to overcome the flesh. Does this, does, yeah, it's like, yeah. And we have that same opportunity to co-labor with Jesus to overcome the flesh to accomplish all that he calls us to do. Got that, Nick? 
He has given us, as we co-labor with Him, the ability to overcome all aspects and temptations and lusts of the flesh of this body that His Spirit was born into. Jesus was the fulfillment of 613 laws, the 613 laws of Moses. I see, I wish I had a, a, big, a big board up here. I would, just, I would love to draw this, that Jesus being the fulfillment. This side, 613 laws, and I think it was like 15 or 16 names. El Shaddai, all of the names of God. All of the names of God are on the, on the Old Testament side over here. Then Jesus in the middle hanging on the cross. He fulfilled all of the law, the prophets, everything that was prophesied throughout the Old Testament. Jesus was that fulfillment. He was the sacrifice, the living sacrifice that sacrificed his flesh, his blood, that we would be saved because he was the fulfillment of every law. He became... He became, said he was the deity, he was the fullness of the Godhead. He became God on earth for each of us as he stood in the gap of the transition gap between Old Testament and the fulfillment of all of the law and all of the aspects of the nature of God in this one man, Jesus Christ, who was hung on the cross, the ultimate and perfect sinless sacrifice for our forgiveness on this side of the cross. It says, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So even from this side of the cross, it's Old Testament, this side of the cross, forgiveness, New Testament, Jesus, the way to the Father. So if we could get the prayer team to, to come up. Really grateful for all that's, that's happened this morning. And I just pray that the word of God, the word that he's, that he's given and the scriptures that he's given would settle in your heart and in your spirit. If any of you doesn't know, has not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, he is the way. <laughs> he is the truth. He is the life. He offers a peace that surpasses all understanding. The peace that will surpass all understanding. He is the peace that will guard your heart and mind. And Jesus says this morning, I give you my peace. I give you my peace. That peace that passes any understanding that we have to guard your heart and mind. So anxiety, oh, it has to go in the name of Jesus. I want to finish reading just a little, a little bit more. Jesus says, I will remain in the world no longer, Father, but they are still in the world, and I'm coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me. By the power of your name, the name you gave me. It's like Christy Lynn. Christy. She, she, it was my name that I gave her. The Christy. I chose the name for Christy. It's like she has the name that I chose. Jesus had the name that God chose. Holy Father, protect them, these people that I'm leaving here on earth. Protect them by the power of your name. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. The name you gave me. So back to the name. Established in Matthew, his name will be Jesus. An angel of the Lord God came and named this 
perfect child, Jesus. The name you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the blood of Jesus. Incredible power in the sacrifice that he made for us. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, thank you, thank you. Your life, your word, by your stripes on that cross, we were healed. And we just claim that healing this morning. We claim that peace that you offer this morning. We give you thanks. We give you praise. And we offer all of this up in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you and keep you and lead you to an amazing and incredible week. And if there's a need in your life of any kind, if you need healing, if you have never asked Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life, we would love to lead you in that prayer this morning. And I dismiss you in the mighty name of Jesus. Go. Amen.